I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about It's Just Too Hard For Me. Oh, love or a relationship? I guess we're going to find out. Okay. Well, sometimes when you get into a relationship, you kind of realize you're in over your head right. and you may be getting a lot more than, than you bargained, you bargained for. for. Or can deal with over a length of time. Right. And so, some people just can't do a long-term relationship right. for whatever reason. For whatever reason. And one of the hardest parts about being in that situation is not blaming yourself. Because people do. Because they can't do it. Right. You feel like, I'm not worth it. Right. They're not doing it because I'm not special enough. I'm not important enough. And they internalize it when it really has nothing to do with them. Unfortunately, there are very few people who are secure enough to say, it wasn't my fault, I don't think. Um, it could have had at least 50% to do with the other person. One of the things that I'm always trying to get you guys to do is really think about what kind of partner you, want. you are going to be with and what kind of partner you're attracted to and many of you guys just don't care. You're stubborn and you only want your ex back. And that's not always the best situation for you. You also have to think about were you meeting her needs? Or Absolutely. his needs, depending on which side of the fence you're on. And I think in the pain of a breakup, we kind of forget about that. That's right, we do. We don't consider how we've been treating them, how have we been giving them what they need, um, have you been acting selfishly? Because a lot of times we have been acting very we selfishly. We don't realize it. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, today's video is about an email from a woman in her late 20s. And she's dating a guy, he was roughly the same age for right. a couple of years. She says, we met at an old restaurant job I had. And I walked in and him and his friend were at the table and we exchanged contact information from there. We lived together From for... just a, looking at each other. I guess so. I'm not I, that smart. He, she was on his menu, I guess. I guess so, yes. <laughs> we lived together for a year and a half. Never engaged or married. No kids. When we were together, I was working at a restaurant and I was a student. So this new job had... Or she's been at a new job since May. Okay? Okay. His parents split up twice. His mom is bipolar... His dad was an alcoholic. Oh dear. Um, he grew up in a privileged environment. Doesn't sound very privileged well, to me. Well, might have had money. Yeah. Was told at a young age he had behavioral issues, ADD. His parents had a really hard time getting him to focus as a child. He was often referred to as a terror from his oh, family. Dear. And he was responding to what was going on around him, no doubt. Mm-hmm. They, they would say he was out of control as a kid, climbing walls, running away, not behaving, to the point where they didn't know what they might do with him. Any thoughts on that? They didn't know what they might... Well, did they get him help? We don't know. I suspect he might be undiagnosed bipolar. Hence That's the, entirely possible. Hence the frequent breakups and ro roller coaster ride. When we first met... We connected right away. Apparently. He asked me to move in after six months. I was convinced we were going to get married, as this is what he told me and his family at the time. I was invited on family trips and got close to his mom. I started to notice changes in his behavior when we would move in together. I saw mood swings, and he would pick fights with me over small things, mm -hmm. such as running out of toiletry. Right. What do you think about that? Do you think he's bipolar? Well, it's, it's very strong in families, unfortunately. And if you have a bipolar parent, your chances of being a bipolar child are quite high. So it's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. He likes to drink and party a lot. 
He has a charismatic personality, loves to socialize and entertain, also a big mama's boy. He has a hard time making decisions and relies on her for a lot. Well, he's got some major problems here. If he is bipolar, there's nobody funnier or more jovial than a bipolar person, and there's nobody meaner than a person who's at the depressed end of that scale. So I, I find it not hard to believe he's jovial and out there. Mm -hmm. but And charismatic. Oh, sure, and charismatic. And it doesn't sound like he is separated from his mother, and that's going to be a difficult part of any relationship. Absolutely. Now, my stepdad was bipolar, right. and so I've seen firsthand how someone that goes through that is... I mean, my stepdad was extremely charismatic, friendly, yes. and talkative yeah. with all yeah. the neighbors, yeah. and this and that, and he loves them, and the next minute he's on the floor, banging his fists on the ground, uh, you know, throwing furniture over. Because he had a mood swing. Yeah, exactly. Right. Drinking all the time. Yeah. He would dis what, a few times he would disappear for days. Wow. We wouldn't know where he's at, what he's doing. Yeah. And this is, you know, pretty typical, I think. Now, we don't know if this guy's um, moods are that extreme, but it's possible. It's worse than possible, it's likely. Yeah. The first time I moved out was in May of last year. After a couple of weeks, he asked me to move back in, saying that he made a mistake loves me and needs me in his life. Off again in August. For a short time, again, he apologized and said we had a special connection and I moved back in. So they were in, they were broken up in May, got back in August, I, so I guess there was a few breakups there. September to January, we were really rocky at times. He had a revelation that he needed to be alone and missed the unpredictable life he once had. Now, the no unpredictable life he once had. I think he still got it. <laughs> he brings it with him. Exactly. I'm yeah. Uh, not knowing how his day would go, uh, so I moved out again. I moved back in with my parents as he stayed at our place. He now lives with a friend in a new condo, about an hour away from her. He expressed his concern to his parents and friend that he felt too young to be living with me and felt he had to take care of me forever as I was a student struggling with rent with him. Mm -hmm. So he didn't like that burden nor or responsibility. I, nor am I sure he feels like a real grown-up because he's still deba debating with his mother around, you know, who's making decisions here. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was overwhelmed, clearly. He has dated others since January. I know he slept with other women. But we were in and out of contact. I would go over, we would see each other, hook up, and then we wouldn't talk for weeks, until May of this year. He asked me to come over, and we seemed to be back on track. I got a new job, I've been focusing on myself. He said he wanted me to join him on a family trip, and I was his soulmate. This went on into July. I wonder what happened into July. I wonder. Since July, there has been a major shift in his behavior again. The last time I saw him, I stayed for longer than, you, than I usually did because I had a week off of work, so he was somewhat abruptly asking me to leave because he felt it was inconsiderate because of his roommate. We argued once because I had been cleaning up after him and his roommate while I was staying there. I get, she got, he got angry at her for cleaning? You don't look shocked. No. <laughs> he didn't try and see me since then. I have a series of needy messages asking what's going on. If he is seeing someone else, he did not respond to any of it, and this went on for two to three weeks. That's really mean. I mean yes, he's just is. completely he ignored. And yeah, and she was probably concerned about him, and he didn't even give her that. Yeah. Recently, he contacted to see me ask, as if nothing had happened. And I wanted to play hard to get, so I told him I would see him the next day. Well... That's not that hard. Yeah, exactly. How hard is that? Yeah, right. I'll sleep on it. <laughs> well, he canceled with an excuse. Two days later, it was my birthday, and he contacted saying, Happy birthday, my love. Yikes, thanks. Thanks. It must, it's so privileged to be your love. Yeah. I get ignored for weeks, weeks at a time. Yeah. And then you remember my birthday, how sweet. With two kissy face emojis. He used to call me his love when we were together. I have not heard from him since that day. 
this, or since we broke up. So I thought this means he wants to see where things are going. Today, I told him I would be in the city. He seemed interested in seeing me and then stopped responding. Okay. I sent him, can you meet after lunch with my sister today? He asked what time and eventually ignored me altogether. I sent him a message, why do you treat me like this? This is so wrong. And he just messaged me, it's just too hard for me. I'm sorry. Right. And if he is, um, I'm going to wager that he's bipolar himself. And he has no idea probably what's going on with him. It doesn't sound like he's ever seen anybody or had an assessment, mm -hmm. which would certainly be in his best interest because it sounds to me like the bipolar is running the show here. Yes. And he doesn't even know he has it and may have a difficult time acknowledging that he has it. That's right. Um, so that would be my first piece of advice to him. But this is she who's writing? Yes. And yeah. for her, I mean, can you imagine what it would feel like to hear that? He's showing no empathy, no, no, no concern how she's feeling through this right. breakup. She does, he, he just doesn't care about him. There or is, he's not showing he's caring about well, her at all. I don't think he can control his behavior terribly well, to tell you the truth. But I think the hardest job on earth is to try to live with a, live with a bipolar person. Because if they I are, can agree with that. <laughs> yeah. If they, yes, you can. You know firsthand. Um, but if, there, if somebody gets onto medication and, and goes with it and accepts the diagnosis, they can live a perfectly normal life. And as I've seen and we've talked about many times, the person that is a bipolar often gets on that medication, they start to do great, and then they say, I'm I don't, doing great. I don't, then the disease <laughs> takes over and lies to them and says, you're doing fine. You don't need that medication. And there are frequent relapses for exactly that reason. That's right. It's um, the biggest problem, I think, with it. I think it is. Is getting to stick right. to it. Because you feel wonderful. You're on top of the world. Um, people do brilliant business deals and things like that when they're manic and then lose it all when the situation flips and they go into the depressive phase. That's right. And I can tell you firsthand because my stepdad had an amazing job, would make fantastic Money, sure. And then he would look for any little excuse. My boss said this, or they slighted me that way, or they did so this I that I didn't like. So, so we would quit these jobs where he was making great money, yeah. and then he'd be laying on the floor for months at a time, drinking. Oh, God. Pro uh, yeah, probably trying to self-medicate the mania where his mood was up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's nothing harder. There's just nothing harder. Mm -hmm. And she's probably trying to find a correlation between what she says and does and what he says and does, and I'm suspecting there isn't a correlation at all. No, I don't the think The disease so. is running the show here. She says, I'm so confused as to what's going on. Please help me with the situation. I need to know how I can get him to stop treating me this way, ignoring me, and how I could get him to communicate what is going on. And he may be perfectly honest in saying, it's too hard. I don't mean to keep hurting you, but I do. But he didn't even give her that. No, he didn't even, He's give her. Given he didn't her even say little. that to her. It's yeah. just too hard. What, what does that mean? Does that mean you're too hard to live with or to deal with? Or, yeah. I don't understand him at all, and maybe you can better explain what is really happening so I can fix this. Oh, well, honey, you didn't cause it, and you can't fix it. You can support him in fixing it, but that's the best you can do. And unless he recognizes what's going on or is willing to do something about it, there's nothing you can do. And that's the one condition where that's absolutely without question. Because if you don't, there is no way to treat bipolar disorder without medication. And I've had people try to call me and say, well, I have bipolar disorder and I need help, but I want to do it without medication. And it's the one client I will say no to because you cannot treat bipolar without medication. That's the one client you'll that's turn down. That's the one client I'll turn down because I cannot help you. Um, you, your mood has to be reasonably stable. If you have other issues, I'd be happy to help you. But until you're on the medication and have committed to that, I can't help you. There's a little bit more here. Uh, she said, what do I do from this point forward with him? I really do love him, or I wouldn't still be here trying to make this work. I will be heartbroken if he is with someone else or continues this behavior. Well, I can assure you, this behavior is surely going to continue. Yes. And even if 
he does get on the medication, it will probably continue because I'm willing to bet at some point he'll get off the medication, he'll say, I'm doing great, and I could tell from experience I've lived with it. Yeah. Um, it the chances of it going magically like you're kind of hoping it will go are slim, yeah. unfortunately. And it's going to be very difficult for him to accept that he that he has it because he said to live with his mother having it and I'm sure he doesn't want it and I don't blame him. Yeah. But every day the medication gets better. Um, there have been dramatic changes in the last 10 years, in the last 5 years, in the last 2 years. So if he saw his mother relapse periodically, um, there are more medications. If you could take a medication for a long time that works for you and then it can stop working. But there are many Which more... Which is what happened with my stepdad. Right. But there are many more medications out there now that are available. Mm -hmm. And so if he gets with the program, his prognosis might be okay. But there's nothing she can do if he's un unmedicated. And he hasn't even gone down that road at all. In any way, shape, or form, yeah. he's barely even communicating with you like an adult here. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. he's got to do that, and he's got to recognize there's a problem before anything progresses in any way. But he sounds like he's extremely... Uh, attached to his mother also. Mm -hmm. um, he's, not in, he's not in a good situation. So if he does reach out, you got to say, look, I do love you and I care about you, yes. but you've got to do something here. There's something going on here. Maybe you can hint at bipolar and see if he's responsive. I'd say it right out. Your mother's bipolar. I know it's strong in families. I've looked it up. You really need to get an assessment. That's right, and see what he does with it. But, I mean, he probably looks okay, and I have had conversations with bipolar people that made all the sense in the world, and I thought, gee, they're doing really well today when they're off their medication. And about a half hour later, I said, wait a minute, that made absolutely no sense. <laughs> but they can sound very with it and very reasonable. And she sounds more than willing to blame herself if she's part of the problem. And I think she's much less part of the problem than she thinks. Absolutely. I don't think this is what, yeah. you know, put on it's her. It's a difficult life. And then you also, unfortunately, run the risk of having bipolar children again. That's true. And you do need to consider that because yeah, you if you're going to have a child with somebody, you need to know what you're getting yourself into. Particularly a bipolar child. Exactly. Well, it's going to take both of you everything you have. Yeah. So, that's it for this video. I think we covered quite a bit. I think we did. Uh, if you like the video, throw a like on there so we know. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I do post videos Monday through Friday. If you want my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype coaching. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I will talk with you soon.